Well, a very warm welcome to everyone. Um, I know many of you on the on the uh, participant list, but not everyone. So my name is Jeff Cowton, and I'm the curator and the head of learning at uh, Wordsworth Grasmere. And uh, it's uh, it seems a while since we broadcast from where I am in the Upper Rotunda, which is part of the Jerwood Centre at Grasmere. So it's it's very nice to be back, um, and it's uh, it's very nice to welcome Phil. Hi, Phil. It's good to see you Hi. again. Um, Phil Shaw from Leicester University, um, who's going to be hosting and, and leading the event uh, tonight. And also, uh, I can't go any further without thanking Hannah, because without Hannah, we, we literally wouldn't be here. Um, she's just a master of organisation of technology, uh, wonderful patience and great determination. So, so thank you, Hannah, for getting us this far. Um, while uh, I have the floor, as it were, I'm going to take the opportunity of thanking Phil, because Phil's been uh, a driving force for this project. He's brought his scholarly knowledge of the poems. It's aided our interpretation. Uh, he's written many of the panels in the exhibition. So, so thank you, Phil, personally and, and formally. Uh, but also to thank your university at Leicester uh, for their support, and also the Art and Humanities Research Council and the National Lottery Heritage Fund uh, for the funding. So it's important without them again, we, we wouldn't be doing this. And of course, we, sh we should have been doing this last year. Uh, the group of poems that we're celebrating uh, were published in 1820, so it should have been 2020 by right. And it wasn't for lack of planning. Um, we began our conversations with the many people involved as long ago as 2017. And uh, it is it is probably the most collaborative exhibition we've ever done. We've had meetings of 15 or more at a meeting, um, people at a meeting. Um, and many of them you're going to meet this evening. Um, some you're not, so to mention them, you'll see their work as we go through, but um, to mention them by name, uh, Prism Arts, um, we should mention, um, a wonderful photographer, Hugo Hunt, who provided a, a stunning picture of the valley, and also Professor Sayako Yoshikawa of Kobe University for an exhibition, for a display on the history of tourism in the valley. I um, should also thank my colleague, Melissa Mitchell, uh, assistant curator, because again, without her, the exhibition uh, certainly wouldn't have taken place. It's possibly the most colourful and most varied exhibition that we've ever had. Um, it's the first special exhibition in the newly opened museum at Wordsworth Grasmere. We've only been open since the middle of May. Um, and even if you can, just for the 33 uh, illustrations of the sonnets uh, that the group Flax have created, that's worth coming just in itself. And, and that's just a small part of it. it. It really is stunning. Um, and to thank everybody involved and to congratulate everybody involved because it, it really is a wonderful outcome. So it's thanks and congratulations. And with that, I'm going to turn my camera off and I'm going to hand over to Phil for the evening. Thank you, Phil. Well, thanks, Jeff. Um, and I'd like to reiterate those thanks um, to everybody who's been involved in this exhibition. It, it's really been, for me, a, a thrilling journey uh, since we first met in 2017. Uh, so, so welcome everybody. This is uh, an evening in celebration of Still Glides the Stream, Wordsworth's journey down the River Duddon, which celebrates uh, the River Duddon, a series of 33 sonnets published just over 200 years ago that trace the river's journey from source to sea, reflecting along the way on the history of the river and its inhabitants, its flora and fauna, local myths and legends, and the passing of time. Well, Wordsworth made many visits to the Duddon over the course of his life. We know that as a schoolboy, he went with a hawkshead man on a fishing expedition to the river. Wordsworth later wrote that the trip was marred by torrential rain. And he writes, very sorry success. Little did I even think it would have been my lot to celebrate in a strain of love and admiration, the stream which for many years I never thought of without recollections of disappointment and distress. Well, undeterred by this early experience, Wordsworth revisited the Duddon during his long vacations from Cambridge University, staying with cousins in Broughton and Furness within walking distance of Ulfa and Seathwaite. He was there again in 1794 and in 1811 visited with his wife, Mary, journeying up the valley on foot. Now, the majority of the Duddon sonnets were written in 1818 and 1819, but two early poems give a sense of the river's importance to Wordsworth. 
In 1804, he composed the sonnet to the River Duddon, which was later included in the 1820 sequence. And it's a verse that characterizes the river as a self-determined spirit, cleaving its way through a wilderness, attended but by thine own voice. An image that chimes, I think, with the poet's self-characterization as an independent and somewhat lonely writer. Earlier still, in 1802, in what will become Sonnet 26 in the sequence, he writes of the river pouring down the hills in choral multitude, its rough noise raising impetuous thoughts that brook not servile rains. Well, the sonnets about the Duddon that Wordsworth would go on to write display a remarkable variety of impressions with poems focusing on the area's ancient history, its customs and the river's many moods. But for me, the sonnet sequence is really about Wordsworth's growth as a poet and his hopes as he enters later life for the reputation of his verse. And it's for this reason, I think, that the that by the sequence's close, those early turbulent impressions have yielded to calmer, more composed feelings as the verse becomes attuned to the Duddon's still repose, its liquid music serene, until finally poet and river unite in radiant progress to mingle with eternity. Well, many of you will know, I'm sure, the sequence's closing sonnet which provides our exhibition with its title, Still Glides the Stream. In this poem, which we will return to at the end of the evening, Wordsworth gives us a metaphor to live by. Like the river, our lives undergo changes. We find ourselves challenged by events beyond our control. We look back on our origins, on our childhoods, and we marvel at the distance we've traveled. How we're the same? but not the same. The river as it flows into the sea, eventually to evaporate, condense and fall as rain, also provides us with an image of how life continues, still glides the stream and shall not cease to glide, the form remains, the function never dies. Well, the exhibition at the Wordsworth Museum seeks to capture something of these impressions inviting visitors to accompany the poet on his journey downstream and to use the words, sights, sounds, and textures of the river as, convey, as conveyed by Wordsworth and the artists who have responded to his poems to reflect on their own journeys. So, Jeff, could we see the first slide, please? Um, the first slide of the exhibition, so I think it's the third one down. Yeah. So here, here we can see colourful, intricate textile artworks, paintings and photographs, as well as showcases displaying materials associated with words with Dudden. I think these images give a real sense of the richness and variety of the exhibits on display. Um, can we see the next one, please? Uh, this shows the work of the South Cumbrian textile art group Flax, who we'll be meeting later on. These works respond to a line or image drawn from each of the 33 sonnets. I think they're wonderful. When you visit the exhibition, it's all you can do not to reach out and touch these works. Um, a reminder that for me that words with poetry of the river speaks to all the senses, not just to the eye. If we look at the next slide, this shows some of the display cases arranged around the room. And here you can see a map on the right hand side of your screen created by the Duddon Historical Society, showing how individual poems in the sequence follow the course of the river. And we'll revisit that again later on this evening. Um, the next one, please, Jeff. Okay, this image shows an aerial view of the Duddon Valley. It's a large scale photograph taken by Hugo Hunt, and it's just stunningly beautiful, isn't it? And it gives you a real sense of the, the landscape that inspired Wordsworth. Okay, and the next slide. 
Here you can see a selection of the sonnets reproduced from the 1820 edition placed in sequence around the room. Uh, so you're invited to follow a journey, as it were, from beginning to end as you pace around the room. Um, and beneath the sonnets, we've included some explanatory text and some prompts to help visitors think about their own river journeys. Okay, so the next slide, please. So here you can see the manuscript of the Dudden sonnets and a copy of the final work, which following its very positive reception in 1820, marked a turning point in Wordsworth's reputation. Here we can also see uh, Wordsworth's walking stick, which was made from wood from the Niagara Falls and a black rook feather writing quill. And I think there's a nice correspondence here that we'll reflect on later between the writing quill, Wordsworth's quill and Norman Nicholson's typewriter. Okay, next slide. So for good reasons, we, we tend to focus on the 1798 lyrical ballads, the 1805 prelude, and the 1807 two volume poems as the high points of Wordsworth's career. But the fact is that these works were pretty much ignored, even reviled at times by Wordsworth's contemporary readers. It was the River Duddon, in fact, uh, which included an expanded version of the Guide to the Lakes that really raised Wordsworth's profile in this period. Um, so in the next case, oh, it is this case, sorry. Sorry, Jeff, if we go back. So here you can see a copy of the Guide to the Lakes published as an independent volume in 1822, uh, along with other related works of early Lake District tourism curated by Professor Saiko uh, Yoshikawa. In the guide, uh, Wordsworth writes in praise of the Duddon's perfect pellucid waters, its beauties equal to any river of comparable length in any country. Uh, and the next slide, please, Jeff. So here, as you leave the exhibition, on this wall, you can see a selection of paintings by young artists from Prism Arts, which draw inspiration from the Duddon Estuary area, which is a lovely way, I think, to emphasize the sense of renewal that Wordsworth describes in that final sonnet. Now, I, I remember Jeff saying at a very early stage in our planning for this exhibition, that it would be a truly collaborative venture, and it really is. The materials you can see came together very naturally, like a river to form a conversation that we hope will continue to flow beyond the museum. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'd like to turn over now to our collaborators and to learn more about their involvement in Still Glides the Stream.